It does not need to be feasible or practical. As long as you stick to the prompt, it doesn't matter how risky, ridiculous, fictional, or imaginary you get. I like to say, it's okay to get weird. We like it weird. So our teams will be judged by our illustrious judges, who I will introduce later. For, they'll be judged on their teamwork, communication, and creative thinking. Teams, you can use the internet to help brainstorm. You also have whiteboards behind you and some markers. Whatever you need to get the brain juices flowing. And you will be delivering your pitch using PowerPoint or any other method that you choose. Google Slides, Prezi, whatever you're comfortable with. You can also get old school with it. You just stand up and speak. However you want to do it. Over here, we have the URL for our YouTube channel where the video will be archived. This um, is our third iteration of Pitch of the Week that we've done at UTA Libraries. And we're about to go into another round of uh, four weeks of competition. So that's youtube.com slash user slash UTA Library. Anyone who su subscribes to the YouTube channel will be alerted when the video is posted and it also has our previous POW rounds on that channel. We also have a POW Twitter hashtag, hashtag POW UTA. Also, if you're gonna tweet today about POW, which I hope you do, use hashtag POW UTA, hashtag TLA18, hashtag Innovation Lab. Okay, you guys, so we've got decks on each table. You're going to pick one card from the deck. It can be off the top, it can be in the middle. Whichever card you wanna pick, don't look at it first though. And this is what is going to comprise our prompt. So each of the decks of the cards, for those of you watching, is we have a discipline, an equipment, and a material that's going to make up the prompt. Totally random, you guys haven't seen this yet. It's so exciting. All right, what did you guys choose? The demagogues, discipline, oh yes, is music. I like that. Discipline, music. What would we do without music? I don't want to know. Material, moldable plastics. <laughs> All right. Oh, it gets better. Yes. Equipment, blender. <laughs> All right. Music, blender, moldable plastics. So you've got to use those three elements to come up with a pitch. You guys can all see that? So this is this is a get get creative with it. A new invention, an improvement on something that already exists. No, yeah, what I have to think, think broadly, think out of the box, think whatever. Get funky with it. See what I did there? Funky? Because funk? Because music? <laughs> I entertain my own self. Okay. So we're going to start the 20 minute timer. Martin, are we ready to start the timer? So you guys get 20 minutes. I'm gonna do some trivia and general shenanigans while you're working, and I also am gonna ask you to inter introduce yourself at some point really quickly, but once we start the timer, yes, crack it. Are we ready? 20 minutes starts. Really soon. 20 minutes starts now. All right, guys. So, team one, the demagogues, real quick, introduce yourselves, name and where you're from, just really quick. Name and where you're from. Oh, my name is Linda, and I'm from the Irving Public Library. Thank you, Linda. Kelly, and I'm from Irving IC. Thank you. Hi. Kelly, you said Kelly? Yes. Kelly. I'm Gretchen, I'm from UTA. Yes, Gretchen. Thank you, guys. The demagogues are our team one. Now, like I said, we have Stranger Things themed trivia for our lovely audience members. And I think we have some, some candy and things if you get the questions right. Even if you guess and you don't get it right, we'll get the candy. Um, Martin, are you going to pass out candy for, for the trivia 
Yes, sir. All right. Trivia question one the, for the demagogues. This is Stranger Things, so think if you're fans of Stranger Things, this is where we're going. What does Dustin name the polywog sized demagogue that he rescues? Anybody know? This little pet? Do you know back there? What does Dustin name the polywog sized demagogue that he rescues? He's so cute in the beginning. Yeah, you can use Google. No? Do you do you watch Stranger Things? Okay, so this happens in the second season. You don't know? Well, do you know Larry? You don't watch Stranger Things? All right. Well, if you rewatch or watch season two, you will find out that that little demagogue that he rescues is named Dart or Dart. <laughs> Trivia question two, what candy bar does Dart enjoy? I'm assuming since from the way that goes, <laughs> Kyle, our videographer, knows. Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers, that's right. That's actually what we have. Oh, there's oh, okay. one. <laughs> Thank you. Three Musketeers was the correct answer. What do the characters from Stranger Things call the area where the demagogues are from? That's kind of amazing. Have you seen Stranger Things? Yeah, so it's, it's what they call it in the first season. It's, it's literally flipped. Yes, the upside down, we got the correct answers over here, both areas. Martin, we got correct answers over here for the upside down. That is what the area where the demagog demagogues are from is called. What is the full name of the monsters also referred to as demagogues? Anyone know the full name? It took me a while to remember this when I was watching. Yeah, Kyle got it. It's demagogues! That's the full name. Take that home. Okay, real quick guys, team two, the Hawkins Lab Shady Scientist, tell us your name and where you're from real quick. My name's Britt, I'm from UTA. Oh, hi Britt, thank you. My name is Aaron, and I'm from UTA. Thank you Aaron, thank you UTA. Thank you the Hawkins Lab Shady Scientist. Yeah, give them a round of applause, we like clapping. More trivia, do you watch Stranger Things? Okay, cool. This is all Stranger Things themed. Just giving you that. You mean down? I'm sorry, but can we turn it down a little bit? Um, yeah. I don't know how to do that, but smile's on. And I will try to not talk so much. Okay. So, what is the name of the actor who plays the lead scientist who Eleven calls Papa? Yeah, and what you know? Yeah. What? Who? He goes he goes on the back. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that the other the cop who eventually is a father figure for eleven looks kinda like this guy too. You're right. It is Matthew Modi. Matthew Modi. In which state is the Hopkins National Laboratory located? Which state? No, but good guess. No, but good guess as well. It is Indiana. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Louisiana, Paris, Greece, New York, you're wrong! That's from the music man. Alright. With which U.S. government department is Hawkins National Laboratory associated? That's a tough one. It is the U.S. Department of Energy. Okay, now this one is from season one. 
An expose about whose death resulted in the closing of the lab. Yeah, you can think on it for a sec. An expose about whose death resulted in the closing of the lab. more pop culture Stranger Things trivia coming at ya. This is the last bit of it. The name Demogorgon comes from what game? What'd you say? Yes, Milan, thank you. Dungeons and Dragons was the correct answer. Yes. Paul Reiser's character in Stranger Things is a reference to his character in what film? At what arcade game did Mad Max beat Dustin's high score? At what arcade game did Mad Max beat Dustin's high score? Nope, not pinball. I didn't even know what this one is, but it's fun to say. Dig Dug. Oh, I know that one. I don't know, what is that? You have to like dig down. Yeah, and these things are like chasing you, and it's like old school. Yeah. Kind of like Pac-Man, but... I was gonna say Pac-Man, but it's in that era, yeah. Yeah. Alright, last trivia question. How are we doing on time, Martin? Let's let's do a check, a chickity check of that time. We're down to 11 minutes and 48 seconds, teams. Remain. Yes. You have... A little over 11 minutes left. I wanna know what you're doing. I see piano keys. I read that. You're welcome. Bob, played by Sean Astin, deciphered a map to discover Hopper's location in the Upside Down. In what film did he use the map to find the treasure of One-Eyed Willie? <laughs> It's on the tip of your tongue, isn't it? One-Eyed Willy. Where are you going? Did you just say it? I know, baby. Baby Ruth? Yes! Goonies, Goonies, Goonies. Such a classic. The Goonies. Brooke got the Goonies right, Martin. We'll get, we'll get you that bit of candy in a little bit. Alright, so I'm gonna, um... Yeah, Brooke got the goodies right. So, Brooke, would you pick up that microphone? We're gonna have you guys introduce yourselves. Please. Let us know your name, where you're from, what you do. What I do? Yeah. I'm Brooke Troutman from UT Arlington Libraries. I'm a social sciences and scholarly impact librarian. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you for joining us as one of our judges today. Uh, I'm Peter Young, I'm the head of uh, Exodus, Harvard, and UC and Apple, uh, with the Department of Compliance of uh, uh, Apple Gen 2 and Logan, and we're going to have a nice Thank you, Peter. Hello, I'm Lana Murray. I am off the Wiki K Library, and I plan the experimental learning in this time. Thank you, Milan. Guys, thank you for being here and for judging for us today. So, I'm curious what you guys think. Did, you weren't here for the beginning. So what we do here is um, the teams are given a random prompt to come up with a pitch based on the prompt. So this is the prompt. They picked random cards for a discipline equipment and material, and this is music, blender, and moldable plastics. What do you guys think you might do 
for a pitch like this. Have you thought about it? No? <laughs> I, I mean, man, I, I maybe blend the multiple plastic in the blender and then maybe create an instrument? Like a whistle or something? What would you do? Blenders make noise. Who would be a good uh, like I'm trying to think of somebody who would be both like Thank you. 
Do you guys have ideas of what you think you would do for this prompt? <laughs> no? I like that stress ball idea. Do you have an idea, Kyle? I haven't really thought about it yet. No? Nope. You're very focused on your videographer job. Much appreciated. take that much time, that's okay. And judges, you'll be judging, obviously, while they're pitching, and then you'll get an opportunity to ask about one or two, if you have it, qualifying questions or clarifying questions. Qualifying questions? What is that? Clarifying questions. So, we're going to... Do does anybody like really feel like they want to start, or would you just go... Oh. That was simultaneous, so we'll just go this way since that's how we introduce everyone. How about we All right, the demagogues are up. Yeah, and you um, can take the microphone. I just wiped off my lipstick, so. Yeah. All right. All right, the demagogues, let's do this. Hello everyone. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Our idea we came up with was is called blender beads. And what you do is you have your blender, 
from our blue retro style blender because that's just look really cool. And you put piano keys in there. Not real piano keys, obviously. It's long plastic piano keys with bells inside to make tones so that when you blend, they hit each other and make songs. Obviously, not, you're not going to be playing like on a box or anything, but make songs. Depending on what you put in there, it's, uh, we'll just, uh, determine the music you're making. So, we have our target customers. We have moms making dinner, avid smoothie makers, kids, experimental music, musicians, Beck and Moby, of course. Where we will sell these? We will start with As Seen on TV. Then we will move Walgreens because they always carry the As Seen on TV, and then QVC. We might even go on Shark Tank before we veneer. Our price point, it will start at $50. We don't want to make them too pricey, but we don't want them to seem cheap. Then we can create new models with different price points. We can go up, we can go down. Our marketing, we will do giveaways. Experimental musicians, musicians and mom bloggers. Everybody reads mom bloggers? We'll get it out there. We'll have infomercials. And like I said, we will try to get on Shark Tank. The face of Blender Beat. We are going to the powder. Yeah. Because we can probably get it for a song in a, well, I said Don, but a song in a dance because she was playing the money. I've never seen her a while. And tiny yeah. little because some people still think he is a fitness guru. So. Um, they will be manufactured in Skokie, Illinois. I picked this place because it's just, it's just funny. Um, <laughs> anyway, good. So they're well known for their plastics manufacturing. And the keys, the actual product will be food safe and easy to clean. Judges, do you have any questions? Any clarifying questions? Use your mic. The molded plastic, it will, the way they've been made, it will be soft. Um, it won't be like a hard molded plastic necessarily. It will be a softer one so that when they hit, they'll just make tones and everything. And, um, they'll also be replaceable, which when you replace, you're going to replace the entire string. So kind of think of like cheap. the flappers of those rolling things when you go through the car wash. Ah, yes. That's okay. okay. Yeah, this is good. I knew exactly what she was talking about. <laughs> Any more questions? Awesome work. Thank you, the dog. And the dog. I said no. Sorry. All right. The Hawkins Lab Shady Science. Thank you guys. All right, so what we have is the beatbox blender. So this is blending to the beat. So it basically teaches you, or you can learn how to make a really awesome banana blueberry smoothie by using the prompts on the smooth on the blender itself. So say um, you do a banana blueberry smoothie, you're blending to the beat. So you put in the apple or whatever fruit that you're doing, so it'll prompt you on the screen at what time, and you're trying to time when these go on. So because um, you, know, you can't just drop fruit in at any point if you want a perfect smoothie, you've got to blend it in at the perfect part. So it'll prompt you to, to put in these like, certain increments and to select what blend you want to do. Um, but wait, there's more to our. <laughs> So this blender machine is going to be slightly revolutionary in that it has a mini uh, 3D printer attached to the bottom. So you have all your blending and stuff on the fruits of your choice. Well, then you can also have some swag as you're delivering it to the customer. You've got some multiple plastic that comes out of here, and it comes into certain shapes. So if you have a blueberry uh, shake or um, smoothie, you can make it look like blueberries. Or if you have a little bit of everything, you can like a cornucopia or something like that. <laughs> you know, there's tons of different options. So you have the little robot arms help with that. It makes, it makes the uh, drink uh, container of your choice. It solidifies. And then the liquid kind of goes uh, from here into the cup, ready to serve the customer. So a lot of flash there. I mean, it could be helpful to promote things. It's probably not something you can get just anywhere. Um, as far as uh, 
marketing is concerned, I think primarily we want to pitch it to um, any given kind of place that kind of sells beverages and wants to use beverages as a good way to make money because they're super profitable. Uh, maybe some non-brand name ones. But hey, if we can go to like Taco Bell and say, hey, you change your menu all the time, here's something. And hey, I'd enjoy this. We'd enjoy that kind of uh, promotional. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Any questions from the judges? Is your fresh rent for your product? How much it cost? We're in for the uh, between $49.99 and $69.99. We're going to have to talk to the manufacturer to see if we can get it. I 
thought I was pretty good at it. Let's see, let's see how it sounds a little bit. It goes. I'm biased. Oh, let's see. Did you hear that? That was the one like, that I like the beat. Well, that's why I just did it over there. You didn't hear it. It's beautiful. There's a there's a, a, a father daughter beat on you know, that's YouTube famous. They also look up. Pretty amazing. Really? I didn't know what you're talking about. I've seen that. There's a father, daughter, three times. They go back and forth. They challenge each other. And they are so cool. Gotta get the robot arms. They do all this stuff. Oh, we're a host! Okay, so what you guys can do if you want to. The. The judges are not unanimous. The audience so, will choose. <laughs> so just, yeah, grab the team name that you're voting for, and you can give those to Mark, and we will take that as the audience vote. And, uh, 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 uh. Judges, how you doing on your decision? Are you guys ready? Okay. So, thank you for being our audience today. We lost a couple audience members, and I'm happy that we're ending with a few. So, let's just see. On the count of three, show us what your vote is. One, two, three. Oh, the Pops Ultra Homages. It's the audience winner. So, wait, wait just a second. Find out who the judges pick. This is the audience pick. <laughs> wow, this is wonderful. Oh, so I mean, again, we're all judges. Judges. I'm Kathy. Um, go ahead and take your mic and let us know who you have. To, is is it unanimous between the judges? Oh, oh my God. Oh, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. It is unanimous. All right. So, judges, who is the winner? The pop culture of homages. Team number three. Team number three. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Do you have any follow-up comments for the coffee challenges? We really like your like use of color in your display. We really like that. And there's boots. <laughs> no, really, we admire true color usage the whole time. Although we really like the other teams. I really like the printer on this one where it like prints your cuff. I think that was very cool to do like that one as well. Yeah. I really appreciate the marketing plan, Team One, yeah, they had online, very thorough and very uh, thought out. Yes. I love the statue for like the paper space that you can have a lot of different cultures in the And the whole first day. So if you listen, you know, they don't drink, they get us you know, they have both, you know, not like that. Yeah. 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 They get the catch and they get this. They get both the ribbons for audience favorites and the trophy for... That's you guys get a ribbon and a trophy. It's like a The Pop Culture Homages is our winner. Thank you guys so much for participating and joining us. Thank you, team. You guys did awesome work. Thank you, TLA. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you and nobody's in the pool. All right, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is funny. I'm going to be serious. Oh, behind the paper. Real quick. Sorry, sorry. All right, Gretchen. Post. Post game. Yeah, I was really disappointed in the outcome. I think ours is really the only viable uh, seller out of all of these. It takes forever to 3D print. How long are those people going to have to stand in line? How many people really want beatboxing um, when they make their smoothies? This will keep your kids entertained for hours. Sorry. <laughs>